What is going on guys? In this video, we're going to go over my solo Stamina Templar PvP build for Battlegrounds in the Flames of Ambition patch. As you guys know, I've been testing Stamina Templar for the past few days and weeks. And I did some Stamina Templar commentary videos. And before they started, I talked about what I was running. And that was the initial steps of making this build. Now this video is a complete 100% best in slot. Uh, this is fine-tuned to the max, and this is what I like, and this is what the best, in my opinion, is. So just a few days ago, I made a complete beginner guide on how to play Stamina Templar in PvP. If you are a new player to ESO or a new player to Stamina Templar, then definitely check out that video. So if I could describe Stamina Templar in one word, I would honestly say obnoxious. This build is just complete nuts. Uh, this thing has so much damage. It has amazing sustain, uh, amazing tankiness. All in all, this is my favorite Stamina Templar build. Uh, in a very very long time i used to main stamina templar back in the day and i think now i'm a stamina templar main again so yeah stamina templar just feels so great this patch so in this video i'm gonna go over my race my food my munda stone and my potions i'm gonna go over my gear enchants and traits as well as my skills so that is basically the roadmap for this video the timestamps are in the description below and let's get right into it so for my race i am an imperial i think imperial is the best for stamina templar uh, it's just so good. You get 2k health, 2k stamina, and you get cost reduction. So I don't have this in here, and I'll explain why here in a second. So this gives you 6% cost reduction at max. So if we look at our advanced stat sheet, as you'll see here, it costs us 1,369 to block. It costs us uh, 2,639 to roll dodge. So just keep a look at these numbers, 1,369 and 2,639, okay? So if we go here and put in our uh, red diamond passive real quick, get up to 6%. It now drops down to 1,287 and 2,486. So this decreases the cost of not only your magical skills, your stamina skills, your ultimates, but it also decreases the cost of your block costs and your dodge roll cost. So this is why Imperial is the best race in my opinion. Uh, it provides a lot of unseen resources that many people may not realize. So Imperial is just so good. If you don't have the Imperial edition, then you can always run an Orc. That they're pretty decent. A Nord is very, very good as well. Uh, Khajiits are very, very good if you don't use Malakath. Dark Elves are amazing as well. You can kind of swap between Magic and Stamina. But the race is really all up to you and your preference and what you have access to. But I honestly prefer Imperial. Uh, my next option I think I would pick would be a Nord in my personal opinion. Um, but you know, that's it for the race and that's kind of why I use this for my food I'm using the Artam takeaway broth. This is the best in slot food in my opinion You could use the smoked bear haunch if you'd like to I know a lot of people have, have been using that um, But I think the Artam takeaway broth is much better at least for me my Munda stone I'm using the serpent pound for pound. This is the best Munda stone. This is very multiplicative with major and minor endurance You definitely see the value out of this and your sustain will be a lot better uh, I don't really recommend any other Munda Stone. So for my potions, I'm using uh, Tri-Stat Potions or Essence of Immovability Pots. Uh, they give Essence of Immovability Potions, give me a CC immunity. It basically makes it to where I can't be stunned for 10.4 seconds. I gain health and I gain stamina. That's the ones I use the most. And then obviously just good old Tripods. Uh, they're good as well. Before we go any further, we need to talk. 73% of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel. What? So that means 73% of you guys want to kill puppies? Come on, guys. Hit that subscribe button so we don't kill puppies. I mean, are you guys serial killers or something? Jeez. And only 9% of you guys have all notifications on my channel? What are you doing, bro? If you don't subscribe right now, I can promise you you're about to get bleated in the next battleground you do. So for my gear, I'm using a five piece of stone on the front bar, okay? On the 2H bar. So this gives me weapon damage, physical and spell penetration. This gives me weapon damage. And for the five piece, whenever I deal damage to an enemy who is off balance, your physical and spell penetration is increased by 5,126 for 10 seconds. So in my opinion, this is legit one of the best sets in the game right now. It gives you everything you need. You get weapon damage, you get penetration, and you even get more penetration on the five piece. So since stamina builds don't have a lot of penetration when compared to magic specs, I definitely think this makes this even more deadly um, than people even realize. This is by far the, my favorite set in the game right now. For my back bar, I'm using Black Girl's Perfected Dual Wield. Um, this is so good. This gives me extra stamina recovery. So whenever I hit somebody with Blade Cloak, I gain uh, Spectral Cloak for 2 seconds, reducing my damage taken and increasing my damage done by 6%. 
uh, for two seconds. So this is just so good. Uh, this is very, very slept on. Having the extra stamina recovery is nice as well. This is just such a solid set. It really meshes well with my stamina Templar and I just, I can't recommend this enough. Um, so I'm using a one piece blood spawn for the extra stamina recovery. You definitely want this. Um, for battlegrounds, you want to have enough sustain. And for my other five piece set, I'm using Essence Thief. So this gives me stamina, stamina, weapon damage. And whenever I deal damage with a lighter heavy attack, I draw Essence from the enemy. I, the pool, it's like a little green uh, AOE. Uh, and it gives you health, it gives you stamina, and increases your damage done by 10% for 10 seconds. So this equates to like 700 stamina recovery. It's like absolutely obnoxious. Uh, this helps you with sustain so much. Uh, I really love this set. This set just meshes again so well with all the damage increase we have and it's I just can't recommend getting this. It's it's so good even for other classes like stamina sork um, This set is just so amazing And for my jewelry one piece, I'm using a one piece malakath. So we have 25% damage increase from that we have uh, Essence thief giving 10% and we have the spectral uh, cloak giving a 6% so we have like 41% damage increase um, from just those alone. And this just does so much damage. So trait wise, uh, I'm going with a sharpened maul. This is by far the best uh, for this spec and build with a shock damage enchant. This is the best enchant for me personally. Uh, Proxy minor vulnerability is very, very nice. Uh, and with all the damage we have, the damage increase we have, that would be just icing on the cake pretty much to uh, increase their damage taken. Um, definitely a sharpened maul is the best though uh, for this spec. I've tried a Nurnhorn maul and I and I felt like the um, sharpened one was just better. It just gave me more damage. You're not going to get as much healing though, but uh, I really don't notice a difference too much in my healing, uh, but I noticed a big difference in my damage. So I just went with the sharpened one. So for your Black Rose dual wield, you want two swords and you want one Nurnhorn and one powered. And I'm using double dot poisons on my back bar. Xenomax added some new things. So swords increase the damage. So for the two H weapons, swords increase uh, your weapon and spell damage by 284. Uh, compare that to maces that gave you 3300 penetration. Uh, this is more of a penetration spec. So I'm really, you know, trying to go high into pen. And running a mace is just best for me on the front bar. For the dual wield. So we get this passive as well that increases our weapon damage by 6% on an off, on our offhand. Uh, also, for every sword we have, we increase our weapon damage by 142. So this increases our healing by a lot. Uh, it definitely no is very, very noticeable, especially with the power trait on our offhand. Uh, we're getting some big, big vigors on our back bar. Uh, this is just best in slot. You could maybe use a dagger here to get more crits or maybe even an axe to get more critical healing. But pound for pound, this is just the best. You know, it gives you the most damage, so you can heal the most. So for my gear on my body, I am using end pen, reinforce on the chest, end pen, end pen, end pen, well fitted, and end pen. So I'm in six medium and one heavy. The chest is heavy reinforced. Uh, this is best, in my opinion, to have a heavy chest reinforced. Um, so for my enchants, I have a tricyclic lift on the head, chest, and legs, and the, everything else is stamina to give us the most damage possible. I definitely think that um, five end pin is plenty enough. You might could drop a piece of end pin for another piece of wall fitted if you wanted to, but that's all preference really. I feel tanky enough and I feel like I can maybe drop one, but I just don't feel like trade changing it right now. Uh, but this is just best in slot in my opinion. So I on my jewelry, I have one swift and the other two are infused and they're all weapon damage. So swift. This is going to go on all of my builds. One Swift is going to go on all of my builds. I swear. Uh, One Swift is absolutely amazing. Um, running Major Expedition uh, with our Quick Cloak that we have on our back bar. And this pairs so well together. Like, I feel slow with just Major Expedition. With this Swift on, I feel like Sonic. Uh, just One Swift. That's it. And this is going to go on all of my builds. I swear. This is so good. And you guys really need to try at least one. Uh, I may even think about dropping uh, another infuse and going another swift in, in my honest opinion. Uh, that's how much I like it right now. It's just so good. So that is all for the gear, traits, and enchants. Um, other set options that you could do. Uh, you could, 
like I mentioned in my uh, complete guide on how to play Stamina Templar, I had mentioned you could not run Essence Thief uh, and run Eternal Vigor. That is always an option. Uh, you have, depending on how you set it up, you may have three heavy and four medium, and that is okay. Uh, you'll definitely have a lot of overall sustain. And honestly, could be an even better setup. Um, th the reason why that would be is you could have, you'd have to run two Eternal Vigor rings here. And you obviously want to keep the Malakath, so then you're going to have to run the boots, the legs, and the chest of Eternal Vigor. And that will cause you to have to have three heavy. So everything else needs to be medium, if that's so. So you can at least get four medium and get a little bit more damage. Uh, but that's more of, of a that's more of a sustained approach, and it's honestly, it honestly seems pretty good. Um, but I'd like the Essence Thief for the overall damage and the extra sustain um, from that. Alright, so let's take a look at the stat sheet real fast. So we're just going to hit our Rally and our Armor Buff. And we're chilling at... Almost 1800 stamina recovery, 5k weapon damage, uh, almost 2k critical resistance, 30k stamina, 24k health. Um, just overall decent stats. We have 8k physical penetration. So let's proc our stun real fast and let's see how much penetration we have fully buffed. So with stun up, we have 13,155 physical pen. Now, also keep in mind, we have power of the light on. So we're, we're at 13,155. So add three, almost 3,000 up on that. So that's gonna be like 16K penetration. And we don't have major breach, we don't need it. Uh, so 16K pen, as you can see on my build, I have 18K physical resistance. So uh, I don't wanna over pen on people. Now, if somebody has major breach on them, then definitely gonna be doing a lot of damage, right? Um, so yeah. If we pop our tricep potion to get our resources up and show the fully buffed recoveries, uh, 2100, almost 2200 stamina recovery on the back bar. We have 2356, uh, 5600 weapon damage. These stats are just amazing, and this isn't even including like uh, our essence thief, like the damage increase, the sustain, and just everything like that. And even the Malakath, this doesn't show up on our tooltip. And the penetration from Stune is just really, really good, right? So. So that is all for the stats. So let's go into the skills real fast. So I use Executioner. This is a must on Sam Templar in my opinion. This is just so good. This secures kills whenever they are low uh, and is very easily canceled. Next, we have Bread and Butter Rally. This gives you weapon damage, minor endurance, and this gives you a big old heal. Um, this, this is just obviously a must. This is your main burst heal uh, and you really need to run this. Now, I have had my disgust to say the least for power of the light but uh it scales off of your maximum stamina so the more max stam you have the more damage this can deal and this this does actually quite a bit of damage and it's pretty easy to hit up in bgs uh you can't hit it up all the time but it's definitely uh usable and since there's really nothing else here that we can use uh this is honestly the best option that we have so i like power of the light it is decent it, it's cheap uh, it does a little bit of damage up front uh, it gives me minor breach so overall i really like it. it it could be a little bit better but uh it is what it is so next we have top lane charge now this is how we proc out our stun right here and i am a huge huge fan of top lane charge uh, a lot of standard templars like javelin and that's great you know you can run that but i think top and charge is much better for my playstyle and for battlegrounds the biggest problem with Stamina Templar is movement, and this is what the Swift trait helps us with some in the Major Expedition from our Quick Cloak, but this really helps you move around the battlefield more than you really even realize. Uh, this is a, a very good stun. It lets you go right into jabs. Uh, like Again, like I explained in my beginner guide on the Stamina Templar, this puts you in the correct position to land all of your burst instantaneously. And you don't have to, you know, move your character. You don't have to sprint. You go right into the fight. You don't have to waste stamina to, you know, run at them or anything. You are right on top of them. And it does cost magic. So I will address on how we get our magic sustain. And obviously part of the reason that is, is from being an Imperial. Uh, I really like Imperial and it helps so much uh, just to sustain your magic. Um, next, we have Biting Jabs. This skill is great. Uh, this thing melts people. It does an insane amount of damage. Um, the passive burning light legit melts people. Uh, it just does so much damage. So for my ultimate, we have Crescent Sweep. This is the better morph. Uh, this does magic damage, yes. But again, keep in mind of all of the spell penetration we have from Stune. 
uh, we, we have the exact same penetration for both physical and spell, so uh, this thing just absolutely melts, right? Enemies in your path take 60% more damage from this skill. It is very cheap. It costs me 67 ultimate. I will never, ever use Dawnbreaker again on Stamina Templar. Ever. No way. You will not catch me with this on my bar. Uh, Crescent Sweep has been slept on, and I think it's going to be the meta for Stamina Templar. If you don't use Crescent Sweep, you're missing out on a lot. And the main reason that is... Uh, is with the burning light this thing absolutely melts people I remember like a few patches ago when they changed burning light people said it was nerfed uh, Including me and that is not the case uh, This procs so often uh, With top and charge into jabs and, and, and into crescent uh, this thing legit melts people and uh, Yeah, burning light on top of everything else that we're dealing uh, is just absolutely obnoxious The damage just stacks on top of each other, right? So for my back bar, I'm using quick cloak so this is how we proc our Black Rose Prison dual wield. So every two seconds, uh, shrapnel shoots out in a five meter radius and it deals damage. And this procs and this gives you a 6% damage increase and damage reduction. So not only does this give you uh, area of effect reduced damage, major evasion. This also gives you major expedition, increasing your movement speed um, with sprint and, you know, just base movement speed. Uh, you zoom with this and it's very, very cheap. It's just overall... An amazing skill i really like it uh it definitely makes you quite a bit tankier especially against some aoe builds like a magic warden stamina warden uh, magic templar stamina templar so overall uh, i think quick cloak is a must on this build and spec and uh you just really can't go wrong with it i would not go with the other morph uh, next we have extended ritual so this is our cleanse uh this skill is amazing it heals an area of effect every two seconds it allows your allies to purge and burst heal on them. It is just so good. Um, Repentance. This is the flex spot that I really, really like. Um, so, I run this to give me more stamina sustain. That's the main reason why. But also, the recovery is nice. This gives you minor intellect. So, whenever you pop a, a tricep potion, that's why our magic recovery was so high. Um, we get a ton of resources from this alone. I mean, as you'll see here, we have almost 600 mag recovery. On our front bar, we have... 500 so we're getting almost 100 mag recovery for just being on our back bar for just, just slotting this alone so this this is so good and it gives you a aoe heal it heals your allies as well and this restores stamina so the controversial weird pick uh i'm using channel focus now the reason why i use channel focus is it helps me sustain my magic so i use top lane charge you definitely will run the wall magic if you use the stamina morph the main reason why is for the recovery so this gives you 240 magic recovery every one second. So this equates to 480 magic region that is not based on your overall recovery. So it also costs magic instead of stamina, which is completely fine. After six seconds, the skill already refunds its magic as spent. And then you're basically getting free resources to use your top and charge. You also have a little bit of your magic sustained from uh, your, your overall recovery as well. So... Um, that is the main reason why we use it is just to get a little bit of magic sustain So again, we use rep repentance obviously for our stamina sustain uh, This is why we can get bio channel focus and Be a-okay on our stamina. We also have the serpent. So we ha we're, we're just fine on our stamina recovery uh, Now if you didn't use toppling charge then obviously you run the stamina morph uh, You get more uh, sustain and you maybe could even drop the serpent for the warrior or the lover or anything like that So it's up to you in your play style. Um, Resolving Vigor, this is your main uh, healing over time. Such a great skill, uh, I can't recommend it enough. And Temple Guard, we use this uh, just in case we uh, can't hit our biting jabs to get our uh, minor protection. And this gives us a little bit of damage shield whenever we block. So let me go over the important passives real fast. Um, so for Stamina Templar, again, the minor protection is very, very nice. So if we add up all of the protection that we're getting, so we have 5% from this. We also have 6% uh, from our uh, Spectral Cloak. So we're getting 11% damage mitigation from the Spectral Cloak and then the Minor Protection on top of that. That doesn't even include, you know, our resistances and stuff like that. Um, so obviously, like I've explained several times, Burning Light, this thing just melts people. I really can't say much else about this. So next we have Balance Warrior. This increases our weapon damage by 6%. This is honestly, I think, a low-key reason why a Stamina Templar got a huge buff. So Zenimax increased our overall stats by 1,000 weapon and spell damage for being level 50. 
So if we, you know, add an extra thousand weapon damage on what we have, 6% of that is a lot higher than what we previously had. So this is why I think Sam Templar hits so hard, is it really got a big buff from this. Um, the, you know, Sam DK got a big buff from this as well, having the minor brutality. This overall, uh, this is just a huge buff to Stamina Templar. Also, we have a 5% cost reduction to our health, our Magicka Stamina, and Ultimate Abilities uh, by 5%. So this definitely helps. This pairs very, very well with being an Imperial. Also, getting a little bit of Ultimate isn't too bad. Um, this is also another reason why Power of Light is decent. It gives you a little bit of Ultimate Regen, so it's not too terrible. Um, so for these passives right here, the Sacred Ground is the most important one. This gives you uh, minor mending, increasing your healing done, and it increases the amount of damage you can block by 10%. So if we're in our rune focus, uh, we have a 10% block mitigation. We have um, minor mending as well. So we'll keep going here with our 2H passives. Obviously get all of them, get all of your dual passives, uh, get all of your medium armor and heavy armor passives. Uh, if you ran the Eternal Vigor, uh, it is okay because you will still get the 2% weapon damage per piece of medium armor. So if you were running 4 medium and 3 heavy, you would get 8% uh, weapon damage instead of 10%. Uh, if you're running like 5 pieces or 6 pieces, uh, would give you 12%, right? So uh, they changed the passives around so you don't have to wear 5 pieces of, you know, a 5 piece medium or a 5 piece heavy to get the big passives. The most important ones oh you only have to run you know one piece and you if the more pieces you have the more uh, percentage base increases uh i don't need anything in fighters guild um get all of your uh, psychic passives all of your undaunted passives your assault and your support and your racial passives obviously and then your uh, medicinal use from the uh, potion alchemy so that is all for the build guys I have tons and tons of content on Stamina Templar for Battlegrounds, some with music, some with commentaries. I will link all of those videos in the description below if you guys want to watch those and want to learn how to play Stamina Templar. And that's it for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.